Okay, so Our Lady um, of Sorrows, the Lamenting Virgin, um, expressive of, of um, great emotion, but in a very gentle way. We're not being slapped around with violence and aggression such as it's not like a Mel Gibson film. This is something much more profound, really. It's not looking at the, the, the grotesque the elements. Work. It's looking to something mm -hmm. um, far, far <coughs> deeper. Is that what it's supposed to look like? So, um, I got my mute on. that's what we're going to try and get on the inside of. Now, the first part of doing that um, is to look at how it's constructed and so I want to go back to, to this image here and I want to look at the way in which um, these, there's a sort of um, geometric point to this. So I want to just put all these circles back on. There we are. So if you want to take a little look at this um, on the screen here. One of the most fundamental geometric patterns that has been used since the ancient Greeks is what we call the, the seed of life. And that's that pattern there. It's made with a compass um, and a straight edge. And um, all the evidence is that this wasn't just used as a useful tool to make things, make sure that everything was in proportion. Um, you can't hear me, John. Um, that's probably something at your end there. Um, if you can't hear me, I think it you must switch something off. Let me just tell John that. Um, So here we've got this, this pattern and certainly um, in Greek philosophy there is reference to the use of geometry and so forth and if you look at the architectural designs of everything from the Parthenon through to Chartres Cathedral you'll find that geometry plays an essential part and okay. the early um the early iconographers their toolbox was the tool back box of any artisan there wasn't a sort of category of artists there were just artisans and they would turn their hands to all sorts of things and some of them turned their hands to painting icons icons as sacred works of art were constructed to express divine truth and in the ancient world the presence or the thumbprint of God could be found in creation especially through its geometrical harmony and proportion so it's um, almost certainly almost certainly um that the early iconographers would have used this as a way of of ensuring that their work echoed the creativity of god and the presence of god in creation um now if i put the image back on if you look at this face just a simple face Look, for example, at the ear. Can you see how that ear is just sort of resting?
from that curve of that petal. If you look at the, this is where I think it gets really quite interesting. If you look at the nose and then look across to the mouth, you see how that curve of that petal goes through the middle of the, the mouth, of the upper lip, mm. and then the corner of the bottom lip is resting on it. Mm. Look at the center line and notice the iris in the eye is resting against the, the line at the top. Follow it down and the bottom lip the corner of that is resting on that centre line. If you look at the line on the right hand side, you can see that the bottom lip comes up to that line. And then look, the inside of the pupil of the iris is resting against that line. So if you look, the, look at the eye, you look at that iris, it's resting between the centre line and the line on the right. Um, can everybody see the, um, the mouse arrow? Can you see the mouse arrow that I'm moving? Yes. Great, yeah. okay. Yes. So, so you can see even something like the eye, somebody said to me, oh, well, if it's all geometric, and he was looking at this image, he said, why is the eye not at the center? Well, I said, you've got to be a bit more creative than that. It's not uh, fundamentalism. This is, as it were, a skeleton around which um, the, um, the, the image is, is being constructed. So think of a skeleton and how your muscles and then your flesh is built around it. Um, so that's what we've got here. We've got a, a geometric skeleton and around it. Everybody, um, if you've got your... Um, let me see if I can um, do something to mute everybody's... Um, Mute all. There we are. There, I've muted everybody, so that should make it a bit easier. Amos, Is that good? There, right. So, even something like the iris, you can see, is centered between those two um, those two lines. You wouldn't have thought about that, and yet. Here, by just putting this very simple pattern, you see how everything sort of nestles together. Look, for example, at our lady's bonnet. You see the, the fold on the right hand side there. You see it, how it's resting on that curve. Look at the fold here on the left hand side, and that's nestling up to that petal. And you look at the fold here and you see how that's stopping on that bottom circle there. So, and then look at the hand. You see the curve of the knuckles resting on the line. And see how it, the hand rests onto that point there. So it seems to me fairly clear that even if they didn't use this seed of life, which I think they probably did because that was um, universally known and so easy to do, even if they just used geometrical principles, this seed of life reveals the balance and harmony and order which is beneath this image. It's not arbitrary. So, the beginning of um, drawing from this, in, this icon, using this as our model, is not to trace it, but is to analyze it, find that geometrical pattern and rebuild it around the skeleton. That's what we're gonna be doing. So um, just take another little um, closer look here, just, to, just again. See like, for example, the, the fold 
of the of the Our Lady's garment here, you see it's sort of resting from this line here across. So it's on that line there, you see, and then coming across. This is resting on that line there and coming down. Um, this is coming down and resting here. So the even the construction of the garment is flowing around this um, this 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 geometrical skeleton, and this has the effect of creating a profound unity in the composition. And one of the things we want to get right is to have uh, unity and distinction. We're not just simply a random painting, and the folds are just anywhere, and what seems right. Some people do that instinctively, and um, they can just feel it. And um, it's so instinctual to to nature. Um, but it, I think, is very helpful, especially when we are beginning our journey as iconographers, to to push ourselves to really draw out that geometrical harmony and balance and then energy that this is talking about. So the, that geometrical pattern helps hold things together and then gives us the freedom to really sort of be creative, pushing things around. So once you've got that, then you see how that center spot you see how the curve of the eyebrow and then the curve of the hair on it rests over that. You've got that wonderful verticality, which is emphasized with the, the bonnet here. And yet the, 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 the movement within the face is coming up from that very strong neck, up and then round and over. Bridget, uh, try re-entering. Okay, so now then I want to show you how to construct that um, seed of life. I have it on a computer program so that if I take an image, I can shrink it, enlarge it, um, and that helps me to easily um, unravel some of these little mysteries. So if I um, go back like this. The first thing that I'm going to do. Where's my lines going? Okay, so the first thing that I would do and this is really useful. You have to define your size. So I'm going to be using this board. I happen it's just one that I happen to have lying around. It's a bit damaged at the corner, but um, it'll do for this course. So I've got a size and I've got to design my icon to this size. Some of you might have a bigger board, some of you might have a smaller board. So what do you do? How do you scale it down? How do you scale it up? The key is the size of your circles. Okay, so when you've got your board and you're trying to... Um... Great, okay, Bridget, good to have you back. <laughs> um, so some people get very worried about size and how do I adjust what I'm looking at in a book to fit on a board. This process will make it much easier for you to do that and rather than being slavish copying, you will be um, working with understanding. You'll be creating it from the inside out. So that's why doing this will, will, will be helpful. But first of all, I want to show you how you construct the circle. So the first thing is to draw a center line. Once you've done that, you get your, your compass, um, and you set it to um, whatever radius um, you're going to want. And then 
you so you work out what size you you want that circle to be and then on that on that line So you set your size for your circle and anywhere on that line make sure you've got a nice big piece of paper nice line from top to bottom and then roughly where you want that head to be so if you want it up or down position your first circle okay so you just draw a circle centered on that line so that's your key measurement. Once you've got this, you don't have to do any more measuring. So, Christine, you say, well, how do you decide on the size of the circle? Well, for example, for, for the exercise we're doing, I want the head to fill most of the board. So I want my circle to be from about here to about here. So I use a, a, a ruler, I measure the cross, and so a circle of maybe 16, 17, 18 centimeters. So that's the diameter. Um, say, say it's going to be 18. So that would give me a radius of nine centimeters. Depends how big your board is. And you want it to be pleasing within the, the size that you have. Is, is that clear to everybody? If somebody's um, not clear, just type a, a message to, to, to ask me to clarify it. All good? Great. So you've drawn one circle, keeping your compass to the same size, you then draw a second circle. So Where's that circle? It seems a bit random. Is that just random? No. You put the point of your compass here, where that line meets your first circle. And you draw your circle from there. Then I'm going to put the third circle. Now, that was the point where I put my compass for the second circle. You just simply go along the line until you meet the point where the two circles intersect. Okay. Put your compass point there and draw your third circle. And that's going to go through this point here and this point here. Then going back to your first circle, carry on along where the two circles meet. You draw your fourth circle. You carry on around the circle to where it meet, they meet again. Draw your fifth circle. And the same again, and you do your sixth circle and then your seventh circle. Great, that's good, Bridget. I'm glad that's working. I hope John manages to get his working too. So that's how you construct that circle of life or seed of life. Now, I use a, a program called Affinity Photo. Um, it's a very, very, very good program. Um, I bought it, it's not that expensive, and I use it for all my pho adjusting photos and analysis. So if you're looking for a good program, Affinity, A-F-F-I-N-I-T-Y, is very good, and it works both with Mac and with Windows. I have a Mac, works perfectly. It also works, interestingly, on my iPad. 
Um, so um, I do recommend that uh, if you're looking for a program, but if you have Photoshop or something like that, it's, it's just the same. Now, if I go to um, my program and I select all of these, And go to let me just look for my tools. What I can do is select all the all the circles, and then you can expand them and shrink them as you want. Um, I have them on a different layer, but um, that's a sort of more of a of a. Uh, technical computer thing, but I think you can see the principle of what I'm doing. And what you can do is um, you can print out your um, image and just using a compass, you, if you look from the chin to the top of the head, so from here to the top there, and you can see the sort of basic um, vertical line, just measure from here to here, or across from there to there, and halve it, and that should roughly give you where the middle is. You have to mess around a little bit to get it exactly the right size, but once you've got it, it's quite useful. So even if you're gonna do it manually, um, it, it, you can do it. It takes a little bit of practice, but it, it, it is worthwhile. And what you can do is to take a piece of tracing paper, and put that over the top. So if you're, um, you get your size a little bit wrong the first time, then you can redo it. So there are little shortcuts you can use um, for getting on the inside. So once you've got your analysis, the first thing you need to do is this. You need to make yourself a template to the size that you want to make your drawing. So this is um, designed for this board. And the document that I sent you, um, the course notes, has got the size that I'm going to be working to. So um, if you, sorry, Leah wants to see how I did the third circle. Okay, let me just go back quickly and do that. Take a fourth. Okay, so that's the, the first and the second circle. To add the third circle, go round the circle there until the two circles meet. Where the two circles meet, that's where you put your compass point. Is everybody with me on that? You all got that? So just go around the circle till you meet that um, point there. And that's where you draw your third circle from. And it should go through where the middle line cuts the first circle and where the middle line cuts the second circle. Okay, in the middle there. So let me put these back. So that's our design. And now what I want to do is I'm going to actually start drawing to my grid. So I'm going to change which um, camera I'm going to use. Hopefully this won't take uh, too long to do. Okay, let me straighten that up a little bit. Right, so you can see that um, I've drawn that template that I held up for you, this one here. So that's what we're looking at. So I've got that seed of life, and then I've actually drawn an, an extra line from this point here to the, not to the middle line, notice, but to the left-hand line. 
So from that top of that petal, down and across to where the line meets the circle, that outward line meets the circle. And notice these two lines are drawn by joining the, the sides of the petals. So that gives you those three lines in the middle. So I've taken the ruler, put it against the two petals like that, that point there and that point there, and drawn a line and the same over there. So that's my template drawn to size. And then what I'm going to do, I've just put a piece of uh, tracing paper over the top. So you see, I'm just putting that piece of tracing paper over the top. And then best thing is to fix it with masking tape. Um, because what you don't want is it to, to be start slipping around. So I just put two bits on there. I just got to message through from Marianne asking if the course has resumed. Okay, so let me um, just fix this. Now, just in true Blue Peter style, those of you from England and, and, and know about Blue Peter, here's one I did earlier. So in a matter of seconds, I've managed to produce this and you can see how um, this relates to that circle that way. So you can see there, that's the sort of drawing that we need to produce. Um, making sure we've got the flow, we've got the expressiveness in, in, in the eyes and so forth. So um, that's where we want to get up to, but the question is how do we do that? So I'm going to um, demonstrate this now, um, and hopefully you'll find this easy. So um, I'm going to use a really soft pencil to begin with. I'm using a, a 4B. Okay, see that? A 4B. And the first step is going to be just to get the general movement of what's involved. At the same time, next to me, I've got a copy of, of the image. This is really, really important. Don't try and just make this up. You really need to keep a good copy close to you. You can either have it on your iPad or you can have it here um, printed out. Second thing I'd say is try not to begin with the eyes and the nose and the mouth. It's what we usually do because you know when you meet somebody you look into their face, you don't look at their ear or their head, forehead, we tend to look at the features. So when we draw, we tend to do that. The problem with this is you can get really, really in a mess. Think big, begin big, and then gradually cut that down. So the first thing, we want to get that, that move. And what I need to do is to get my image with the circles up on my computer screen so I can see that. And I want to just get that sweep right. So if I found that first petal, one of the things I also have to do is bring this up so I can see what I'm doing when I'm talking to you. Okay. Um, so I'm looking at that petal there and that ear 
which is about halfway across. I'm just going to put a little mark like that. And then there's a sort of the sweep of the neck is going to come down, something like that. The other side of the neck is a bit easier to see. Um, just bring up something here for myself. That's all right. right. So if you look at the analysis, you can see that the um, neck sort of comes just in from that, that line there. So I'm getting that in. And then there's this angle of the side of the face. Okay, so that comes up here, up to here. So that's that side cheek. And then if I look up here, that's going to go across there and then meet up with that, sort of like that. So what I'm trying to do um, is um, to get that flow going, okay. Okay, so that's given me the chin, the side of the face, and then that's going to give me the, the neck like that. And then I'm going to get the, the bonnet in. So that's going to come round like this. And a, nice, a nice flow. And you can always just lift it up like that so you're not being confused with the, the circles. This is why doing it on a um, this paper is 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 useful. Um, I just Marianne's having trouble getting back in. Let me see if I can um, admit her. Right. Let me have to do that right. Right. Let me try. Okay, so then now I can begin to sort of position the eyes. So remember we have the, um, that between those two lines, we've got the um, iris there. And then if we go down here, we've got the other iris here. So I'm just gonna literally just sort of put that in a little bit. And notice the, um, I got this nose coming out and then that's going to go up there like that. Maybe that needs to come in more like that. Most important thing at the beginning is just to really roughly get things in the right place. So I'm shading across there because the eyes are sort of set back. 
So um, I'm going to put that in there like that. Show by the side of the nose. What's that darker side anyway? And now I can think about um, putting the um, the mouth in. I can gauge it's about here and keep the angle of the eyes and the mouth basically the same. It's going to come up to here and then up a little bit to there. And then like that. there. Notice that the bottom of the chin is not here in the middle, it's to the side and that's really important because if you don't get that right, um, it's going to throw the, the angle of the, the face. So the, make sure the, where the bottom of the um, the chin is resting here, not here. So get that across there, and it's going to come up. And then we've got um, this arrangement of the the hair, and that's coming in here, and then coming across and coming up there. So that's a bonnet. If you think of it behind the head, and it's sort of tucked up and going 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 around like that and then get this hand in here notice a good indicator of that is that top finger which is going from the point in the circle across and then coming in by the side of the face and then this is coming down like this and then Now, if you do it quite loosely with your pencil, you can easily correct things. The worst thing is trying to get it all really precise at the beginning, um, and then you find you've got it not quite in the right place, and you've got to undo it and redo it and try it again. It becomes, becomes very difficult. So it's much better to be really loose at the beginning and really just explore the image. And this also helps the image become much more alive. We don't want Oh, an exact copy. If you want to do that, you can use a photocopier. But if we're trying to draw a sacred image, which is really the this doorway from heaven to earth, it's got to be something filled with divine life. And for that, we've got to be engaged at that level. We, we've got to be meeting heaven here as we're drawing it and allowing heaven itself to shape it. We're just tools in God's hands. So just allow that to gently take form. Um, now we've got that angle there. And then this will come down to about here. And then that's going to come down to here. And then that's going to go down here like that. And then on this side, you've got the hand, and then you've got that cloth. It's going to come down like that. And then you can begin to create. these folds going on so you notice this comes to, to that line to, to this um, line there and then this is going to come down up here and then down like that so doing it this way creates a, a sort of movement I just left a piece of white paper under there 
can see the sort of um, image we, we, we want to make, okay. Um, just checking there's any, any comments? No, okay. Um, I need to bring the front like that. Okay, so can you see how you, and gradually, it's got expressiveness even at this stage. It's not a mechanical copying, but it is getting some sort of feel even at this stage. Once you're beginning to get that, then you can begin to, to, to refine it. I'm quite pleased with that. That's not that seem too bad. So now I can sort of fill in a bit more around here. Let me get that all in balance, refine that. And I can begin to, um, if I put that, actually this is all, uh, yeah. So then we work on this eye here, get this shape right. And then that's and it up and over. And this is coming up and over like that. And then it's coming down here. Got that. So they're coming round here and up. And then the size of the nose here. Now, one of the things is 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 working on on the features. Okay, once you've got once you've got your your rough map, you need to then hone in on on getting these features right. And um, I think in the sheet I said I've got a little sheet here where I've blown them up, and I think I may have sent those around the front of your the document I I sent you. If you look more closely, can you see how the eye is, is really flowing around? There's real movement, real expressiveness. So I really want to get that working here. And you see that beautiful flowing shape of the eyelid. Um, it's narrower here, it's getting broader, coming across and then coming down like that. Um, I can get my um, pupil in here and between those two. But again, look, I'm being very rough. I'm not being too precious at this stage. You really allow yourself to, to, to be free. Um, if your image is going to look free. I want to try and get that expressiveness in, in here, getting that curve around that eye. So if you think in, in nature, if you just feel your face, you can feel the, um, the bone and then set into that great big socket is, is your eye and it's sort of set back. So that's why it's, it's in shade, because it's really a set back. So you can afford to get that sort of shadow back like that. And then that's sort of going to come up here. And then that's sort of... Yeah, I now I'm going to work on the, the nose in relationship to the eye. I want that to come. But the at the bottom you have these teardrop shapes, and then it slightly bows outwards, and then you've got the the top of the the nose, which is sort of a bit flared. Um, and then this is going to come up something like this. 
going to just work on that. No, so it's not quite right yet. Um, and then you've got that little part there. And then my, I don't know, maybe the nose isn't quite right. Let me, right, corrections, how to correct. Just as important as knowing how to, to, to draw it. So here I've got my um, putty rubber. Um, I'm just going to, because this is all so soft, I can just take it all off, just like that. Easy. If you've used a hard pencil, um, you're going to mark your paper and then you're going to really rub really hard. So that's why I'm using a soft pencil at this stage. Don't, don't push yourself to use um, a hard pencil too soon, even though it's very messy and you get it all over your hands, all the, the grey stuff. If you want to protect that, just get another bit of paper and put that so that your hand's resting on that. Um, now then, let me see. If I go, I'm going to take you back for a moment um, to to this picture here, okay, and I'm going to put that diagonal line in, which I might have on here. Probably haven't. So if I get my tools here and I can then select a I can just select that line. So to do this. Put that diagonal line that I was talking about that's going to go through two points. This point here. Not that point here, but this point over here. So let me move it across to there. And swing that round there. Now, do you see that that line now shows you where the, the nose is going to rest? And that's really quite useful because you could see how it's getting a little bit um, lost about where, where should that, that nose be? So now let me go back to my uh, drawing. I can see that. Okay, so going back to this, um, I can now position my nose according to this line and basically the the bottom of the nose is a bit further down than I had it and you always have this sort of teardrop shape like that and then um, that's actually a bit further across like that and then it's going to come up and go across here. So where that line crosses that petal is sort of where the line crosses. And then here, it sort of curves out slightly and then flanges at the top. So you've got that sort of shape, it's sort of slight curve, comes into the, 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 the bottom of the nose like this. And then you've got that nostril coming across here. So I can just sort of scratch that in. Um, the top of the nose has this um, strange sort of construction. It, it's not what you find in nature. Um, so you have to 
it's a sort of third eye, the sign of the soul of the um, of the person. So it's going to go in there like that, and then that needs to curve around there. Now, one of the things I'm going to I'll work a bit on that nose in a bit, but one of the one of the things that a lot of people find difficult is how to position the nose, and they sort of do it because it's got um, a teardrop shape like that. They do it as though it's sort of vertically on, but this is at the side. So it's actually got to be one, not at that angle, but at that angle. So then it's got to curve around like that. Okay. So this has got to curve around like that so that the bottom bit is here. So that's on that there rather than up there. And then that's going to come round to here, get this here, and then the, the lips coming up here. So it's got that rounded middle bit, first of all, and then that's coming up across to that line. And then coming down like that, coming across, across here, and then to here. That, and then that bottom lip set between the petal and that middle line like that. Okay. And then this is going to come round the same. Bit. That angle there. Okay. Now I'm only putting this in very roughly, um, and you can see that this is going to take quite a bit of bit of time uh, to get right. A um, little bit of shuffling around, getting these features in the right place, um, getting that coming up there. One of the one of the temptations that a lot of people fall into when they're drawing um, is to make everything scrunched into the middle. So the eyes, the nose, the mouth become small and small and small and shrink in. Um, and that that isn't very helpful. So do try and push your face to really fill the area. Um, so now let me move this across. Now we're about out of time on, on this session um, and I'm going to continue to, to draw this up so that you'd end up refining this to this image here. Okay. Put that on there like that. So you can see that. So that that's the the image um, that we're going to be working to. So for yourselves, um, those of you who are who are now going to go and try and do this yourself, I want you to try and get up to to this point um, because um, this afternoon session um, I'm going to review this um, and then uh, prepare this for transferring to the board because tomorrow I want to. Um, let me just look on the list of what we're doing, um, which I should have here somewhere. Maybe I don't. 